This episode is brought to you by the all-new NAD M10 V2, featuring a size-defying and conservatively rated 100 watts per channel of amplification. The M10 V2 sets a new standard in audio. Are you ready to go on another journey up river through hi-fi in a boat called Music? This is the first in a series of three high-end amplifier reviews. One will be crazy expensive, one will be a lot more affordable. Today we're going to be talking about something called the GAN 400 from Peachtree Audio. This is a Class D amplifier, D does not stand for digital, and a Class D amplifier is not defined by its use of switch mode power supplies, neither is its signal processing done in the digital domain. It's still analog. So what makes it Class D is the use of MOSFETs on the output stage, but they're not used as they are in Class AB amplifiers or Class A amplifiers. They are switched on and off at very high speed. And that switching creates pulses and those pulses correspond with the amplitude of the analog signal. Now, the GAN 400, the clue as to why I'm talking about this today is in its name, because this is one of the first of a new breed of Class D amplifiers that ditches MOSFETs and uses something called GANFETs in the output stage, so different type of output transistors. And what makes GANFETs so interesting to audio engineers is that they can switch much faster than MOSFETs. Now, according to Peachtree, one of the benefits of having a faster switching output transistor is that it creates less switching noise. And that lower level of switching noise means that global feedback, global negative feedback, isn't required to correct for that switching noise. Feedback is often used by amplifier designers to lower the distortion, lower the measurable distortion of their amplifiers. So the way it works is the output signal is compared with the input signal and then any errors in the output are corrected by adjusting the input signal. But obviously that can't take place instantaneously. We're still correcting after the fact. It's a bit like how active noise cancelling headphones work. Still, the use of negative feedback or global negative feedback. Feedback is, you know, it can be local or it can be global, but I'm really talking about feedback here in the general sense. In the global sense, it can be used to flatten an amplifier's frequency response. It can be used to lower the amplifier's output impedance, and therefore it can be used to increase an amplifier's damping factor. But more than anything else, I think, and I'm, I'm pretty sure this was the case in decades gone by, is that negative feedback was used to improve the THD scores on paper for amplifier manufacturers. So they had bragging rights on a spec sheet. Now that sounds great, right? Like you could, you, it's just a win-win situation to use global negative feedback. But the late Charlie Hansen of Air Acoustics, he really wasn't so sure. In fact, he was so convinced that negative feedback had a detrimental effect on the sound quality of his amplifiers, he made zero feedback one of the pillars of air acoustics. And according to air, even to this day, the use of feedback only really corrects for distortion in a steady state signal, i.e. test tones, and doesn't really do much for music. And I'll end the, the, the technical bit with the power rating for the GAN 400, which you can see in the rack behind me. 400 watts per channel into eight ohms or four ohms.
Now every power amp obviously needs a preamp. Peachtree sent me their pre-DAC, which I believe they're bundling with the GAN 400. You can see the pre-DAC in the rack behind me as well. Just a reminder here, we're not reviewing the pre-DAC today. We're just looking at the GAN 400 power amplifier. No, the GAN 400 doesn't sound analog or tubey. That's really kind of what reviewers say when they don't have anything else to say. Neither is it the other kind of class D descriptive cliche, cold and dry. Now together, the pre-DAC and the GAN 400 from Peachtree have a tremendous sense of rhythmic expression. They also sound very elegant. And these are two features that set them apart from the Nova 300 integrated that I reviewed a couple of years ago. But so what? I mean, so what if these two things are better than an old model? What we really wanna do is compare the power amp, the GAN 400, to a similarly priced Class D power amp. Now, obviously I have to work with the gear that I have here in-house because I'm never gonna pull down a, I heard a power amp at a trade show three years ago and I'm gonna use that as a comparison because that would be insane. No, instead I'm going to use a MyTech Brooklyn Class D amp. And I went to town actually. I really, you know, spent a good two weeks comparing these two, flipping them in and out and in and out. So I think I've got a pretty good handle on it. Now, please note, this is not, not the Amp Plus. There's no plus here, not the latest model. And if you want to know how the GAN 400 compares to another Class D amplifier, I'm very sorry, I have no idea. Now, obviously, if you're short on space or you want a physically more convenient unit, you want the MyTech because the Peachtree is bigger. But the Peachtree, I think, looks much nicer. It's a showpiece. It's something to put in a rack or on a low board to show off to your friends, really, I guess. Whereas I think the MyTech is more of a tuck it away kind of unit. Whilst we're measuring things, I found that both of these power amplifiers, the Peachtree and the MyTech, drew sound stages of a similar size, like a, you know, like a landscape painting between the loudspeakers, a little bit outside of the loudspeakers, but there wasn't really a huge difference. And I found that out from playing Bites Their Tongue by Prome, which is Electronica slash IDM from the mid noughties However, the GAN 400 lends Prome's ticks and clicks and squelches a greater sense of excitement, not just through a greater sense of microdynamic urgency or clarity, but also, and this is the key word here, delicacy. Similarly, if we want to extract a greater sense of microdynamic flair from Galaxy 500's cover of New Order's Ceremony, we go with the peach tree. The, the MyTech is plenty powerful enough and it does have good levels of microdynamic flair, but it just lacks that last sort of few percent of avidity. Now we turn to Bowie's Let's Dance and Obviously, obviously, the best track on the album is Ricochet, first track on side two. Now this track told me that the Peachtree gives a greater sense or more evident top end air and ambience than the MyTech Brooklyn amp. The Brooklyn just sounds a little bit more hooded, a little bit more restrained in that respect. But the deltas here are small. slightly bigger difference between these two class D amps is on separation. Because when I play something like Maria's Little Elbows from Sparkle Horse, I note more space between the acoustic guitar and the drum on this track through the GAN 400 than I do through the MyTech. And that's quite noticeable. Okay, Tom Waits fans, you think you know the Tom Waits song, Little Drop of Poison, which is here, which is on this baller's Bastards and Brawlers 3 double LP set. This is the, uh, the record store day release from a couple of years ago. Olaf just told me he's got the original box set. That makes um, him better than me, obviously. Um, anyway, so this, it's, it's a wonderful song, but it's not the definitive version of Little Drop of Poison. Oh no, 
That's not on here. Sorry, Olaf. The definitive version of Little Drop of Poison, according to me, is on this Vim Vendors soundtrack, The End of Violence. Now, the version of Little Drop of Poison on here has much more sort of Rain Dogs-esque sleaze and swagger than the original. And the muted trumpet on that definitive End of Violence version sounds, it just sounds more believable as an instrument through the peach tree than it does through the MyTech. Again, a small difference, but yeah. Go and hunt down the End of Violence soundtrack. It only came out on CD, was it the end of the 90s, early 2000s? Not a very well-known Vim Vendors film. I'm just, I'm just hamming this up just to, just to irritate Olaf. <laughs> <laughs> and that sense of realism also translates to the piano in the Tom Waits track, A Little Drop of Poison. It just sounds more believable at the hands of the Peachtree amp. Now, obviously, I used the Peachtree pre-DAC as a constant doing this power amp comparison. So I used the pre-DAC to feed the GAN 400, then the pre-DAC to feed the MyTech amp. Now, to double check this sort of piano believability finding, I cut over to this. This is lovely. Piano versions from John Hopkins, who is... I guess ordinarily you'd call him like an electronic musician or a techno producer. I mean, he does produce some fairly intense stuff, but this is extremely delicate. This is for people who really like Niels Fram, especially the quieter moments that Niels Fram produces. And sure enough, like there's, there's four tracks on here. And once again, I was able to, well, not once again, I was just able to confirm that a piano's believability is a little bit more convincing from the peach tree than the MyTech. And I have to emphasize the little bit. What about low end? Well, I stuck with the End of Violence soundtrack. There's a Modesky, Martin and Wood track on here, which just showed that the peach tree had a little bit more kick on the, on the kick drum. Again, just a bit, just a bit more than the MyTech. I think overall the MyTech just sounds a little bit more polite and restrained than the more exuberant, but very finessed and delicate sounding peach tree. A reminder once again, and I'm sounding like a broken record here, is that the differences between these two amps are not night and day. One doesn't blow the other one out of the water. One doesn't destroy the other one. <laughs> the deltas are small. And I think to the average person listening to the two, they'd just be like, well, I don't really hear it. But to audiophiles who really want to hone in on these differences, which is part of the audiophile pursuit, they, they matter, especially to people weighing up these two amplifiers, which, which I get. My tech or peach tree. You know, analyzing small differences, I think, really lies at the heart of what it is to be an audiophile. And this is also what we find as audio technologies progress. I mean, as Class D is progressing, it's not done in huge leaps, but lots and lots of very tiny progressions over the years. So if you compare your average Class D amp now to 10 years ago, then I would say for once that the difference would be night and day. <laughs> so my question is this, is it the GANFET's higher switching speed or the associated lack of global negative feedback? Why this Peachtree amp sounds so good in communicating music's finesse, delicacy and tonal color? Because really, actually, it is the finesse and the delicacy that impresses me the most. The GAN 400 has a very, very strong sense of ease. You know, we can relax into this amplifier. It doesn't make us tense and excited as much as other class D amps. I mean, I won't put the MyTech in that bracket because that's also very good, but it's a little bit more matter of fact than the peach tree. So I'm pointing to the MyTech because it's, it's, it's down here, <laughs> sorry. But you know, I would even go so far as to say that the GAN 400 sounds mellifluous. Now, because of that, I think that the pre-DAC plus the GAN 400 sounds closer 
to the Hegel H390, which is an integrated, than it does the MyTech Brooklyn Bridge when paired with its matching Brooklyn amp. So you're probably going to wonder right now, okay, John, well, so how does the pre-DAC with the GAN 400 compare to the Hegel integrated, which is a class AB amplifier? So the Peachtree combo isn't as warm or as rich or as ever so slightly hooded as the Hegel. And with the Tom Waits track, the Hegel, I think, really gives us a greater sense of intimacy, which I think benefits that Tom Waits track a little bit more. But with something like the Prome Cut or even the Galaxy 500, the Peachtree combo sort of opens the skylight, lets more air and light in. and allows us, I guess, to see further into the recording in some respects. It gives us a great sense of transparency, a little bit, a great sense of clarity, a little bit, without trading in on any kind of low-end oomph. That said, the Hegel's presentation does lend a little bit more flesh to the instrumentation in Galaxy 500's cover of New Order's Ceremony. And I think it benefits from that, more so than the extra clarity brought by the peach tree. The whole point here is to maximize the listening experience of Galaxy 500 and Prome and Tom Waits using the gear that we have available to us. That's what I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to find the best hardware for these songs. So I think the Peachtree offers a little bit more lower treble illumination than the Hegel. It's not glare, it doesn't make you wince, not even close. It's just a little bit more lit up. And I think that really benefits Bowie's Let's Dance, the whole album, not just Ricochet because there's lots more percussion in that, in that album. And I want to hear that percussion, especially in the sort of the big breakdowns in the title track, which is that massive, I think, seven minute version of Let's Dance. But enough audiophile descriptor wankery. The peach tree combo gives us an MM phono stage because that's inside the pre -deck. It gives us headphone listening, which is also inside the pre -deck. And it must be pointed out that the headphone amplifier in peach tree gear is much better than your sort of average headphone socket on your average integrated amp or preamp. It's really good. It's a dedicated headphone circuit. It can drive pretty difficult headphones when it needs to. I don't think it'll do the HE6 from Hi-Fi Man, but it you know, makes a decent fist of something like the Sennheiser Drop HD6XX. Definitely enough go juice there. But the fact that the Peach Tree Combo can trade blows with the more expensive Hegel integrated tells you just how good this combination is, just how good the power amplification is, just how good this new type of class D amplification is. And I think that's super impressive and super interesting. But also let's not forget that the Peachtree Tufa, I think looks better than the Hegel integrated, which is quite plain and pedestrian or functional or whatever you want to call it like it's a, it's a black box and Peachtree have always 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 gone to greater lengths to make their gear look more I guess futurify esque a bit more modern a bit more attractive to the average person I thought I really wish they hadn't gotten rid of the tube so I think they go the extra mile in in convincing people that a product isn't just its sound quality, but also its looks as well. Anyway, if you like this video, please hit the like button down below. If you like my attitude towards high-end audio, in that I'm actually at the start of this video is super techy, and I'm worried it was a little bit dull, but sometimes you have to go through that. You have to explain why this thing is different. And I can't just say it includes GANFETs because everybody's going to be like, what's GANFETs? So I need to explain a little bit more and the implications of, you know, having no feedback in the circuit as a result. So if you, I guess if you dig that sometimes I have to go down a little bit of a technical rabbit hole in the context of YouTube to explain what's going on here, then please subscribe to this channel. And as always, thank you ever so much for watching.